We are currently exploring the tallest building in Melbourne over time. This is the second video in a two-part series. You can find a link to the first instalment in the description if you'd like to watch that first. We find ourselves at the western end of the central business district, where in 1971, nearby developments at AMP Square and Marlin House have only recently been completed. It's here that the mining conglomerate BHP looked to develop its headquarters, and in 1972 saw the opening of its glass and steel face tower that saw the first 150 metre building completed in the city, BHP House. At 152.5 metres in height, the design by Yunk and Freeman Architects, under the direction of Barry Patton, looked to best showcase the use of steel in the construction industry, of which was one of the primary activities of its client, BHP. A tubular steel-framed core was provided for the full height of the building, with cantilevered steel deck flooring, a steel-framed glass facade, and the structure tied by steel trusses. The outcome allowed for an open internal floor plate with no interior columns. The design of the facade comprised a welded metal skin, which was used as a permanent formwork for a layer of concrete beyond, which in turn provided insulation and fire protection for the internal steel frame. The building was also one of the first in Australia to promote its own energy concept, with BHP supplied natural gas used to generate the building's electricity. BHP House today is sometimes known by its corporate address of 140 William Street. In 1975, the Commonwealth Bank Victorian head office was completed at a height of 153 metres on nearby Collins Street to become Melbourne's tallest building by a marginal half metre. The Bates Mart and McCutcheon design formed the building facade entirely as an elongated expressed structural grid. Utilising granite faced precast concrete panelling, the building exemplifies the modernist design style. Similar to other contemporary developments in the city, a building setback and plaza at the street allowed for an increase in the overall building height. The street interface was later altered and the plaza infilled and today is known as the Optus Centre. Through the 1970s, the Pacific Island nation of Nauru had generated much wealth from the mining of phosphate on its land and looked to invest in international real estate. And in 1977, the 183 metre tall Nauru house was completed. The tower plan was designed as an octagon and showed similarity in its form to the MLC Centre in Sydney, which had been completed that same year to become the tallest building in Australia. Nauru House was originally surrounded by a large plaza that allowed the building to obtain a coveted street address along nearby Collins Street. The original pebble concrete facade would be later replaced in its entirety by an aluminium variant and the elevators upgraded, which saw the overall building height increase. The plaza was recently infilled by podium with two additional towers constructed on site. A year after the completion of Nauru House, in 1978 the first tower of nearby Collins Place was completed at a height of 185 metres to its roof and was joined by its second tower in 1980. IM Payen Partners, once again with local architects Bates Mark McCutcheon, developed a mixed-use complex that had consolidated much of an entire city block. One tower becoming home to the ANZ Banking Corporation and the second the Wentworth Hotel, now the Sofitel. The towers, clad in tan coloured precast cladding, sit at 45 degrees to the Melbourne city grid, with a plaza formed at ground between the towers, which is enclosed by a space frame roof. Lending to the consolidated development site, an extensive underground car park was excavated below, at a scale not seen before at that time in the city. Collins Place would be the tallest building in Melbourne until the mid-1980s. In 1986, the Rialto Towers were completed at the western end of the Central Business District and became the first building in Melbourne greater than 200 metres in height. At 251.1 metres tall, the Rialto Towers on completion was the tallest office development in the Southern Hemisphere. Similar in approach to Collins Place, the Rialto Towers are formed by two buildings. However, here are conjoined to provide a tiered overall form. 
The development was somewhat controversial in its demolition of the 19th century Robbs Building that it replaced. However, heritage buildings along Collins Street were retained, including the Older Fleet and Winfield buildings and the 1889 Rialto building, for which the towers are named. The towers are finished in curtain glazing that has allowed the building to change colour as the sun sets and offered the first public observation deck in the city with unobstructed views from the 55th floor, of which operated until 2010 when it was reconfigured into a restaurant. The building would be the tallest overall in Melbourne until 1991, however remained the tallest when measured to roof until 2006. In 1991, the 260 metre tall 101 Collins Street was completed to the design of architects Denton Corker Marshall. The architectural design made use of a 65 metre tall spire, which allowed for the overall height of the building to become Melbourne's tallest. 101 Collins Street replaced the CRA building, of which had previously been the tallest in the city throughout the 1960s, with the owners also looking to purchase much of the adjacent property, so as to control development in the vicinity and protect views from the tower. The tower form evokes that of early 20th century New York, where the building steps inwards along its height and culminates in a pinnacle. Finished in a postmodernist style, the tower is clad with a double glazed facade and granite panelling above a monolithic podium with lobby completed by Johnson Berge Architects, a design which included granite, Tuscan, Doric columns at the street frontage. It would be only a matter of months before the completion of the nearby 120 Collins Street, of which would be marginally taller at 264.9 metres. In fact, there were four buildings greater than 200 metres to be completed in Melbourne over the course of the year. The design by Hassel, in association with Daryl Jackson, provides some similarity to its predecessor at 101 Collins Street, instituting also a tiered postmodernist design and topped by spire. The building's granite facade is inset with a grid of square openings to all elevations. The project was completed with a garden at its base and spans the full width of a city block to Little Collins Street at its rear and is synonymous with many large multinational offices. 120 Collins Street was the tallest building in Australia until 2005 on the completion of Gold Coast's Q1 Tower and the tallest in Melbourne until 2006. It remains today the tallest office building in the country. It would be some 15 years before a tall building would have such a significant impact on the skyline, but it would be worth the wait. And in 2006 saw the completion of the 297.3 metre tall Eureka Tower, of which became not only the tallest building in Melbourne, but the world's tallest residential building when measured to its highest occupiable floor. The design by architects Fender Katsalides takes its name from the Eureka Stockade of 1854, and its facade referencing the movement's blue and white Eureka flag. Red stripe detailing was included to signify the Bloodstain Rebellion, and most notably, the building is crowned in a 24 karat golden facade with indication to the Australian gold rush of the time. The building features also white line markings at each level, which transform the entire facade into a city scale ruler. The tower provides more than 500 residential apartments, of which in the years to come has become the main focus of the high rise development in the city and offers a public observation deck on the 88th floor. Constructed of a reinforced concrete core and floor slabs, the upper levels have been designed to sway up to 600 millimetres in the wind, with two 300,000 litre water tanks on the roof, dampening the building movement from any excessive swaying. The Eureka Tower remained the world's tallest residential building to roof until 2010, and was Melbourne's tallest until 2019. The Tower of Australia 108 was topped out in November 2019, and at 316.7 metres in height, became the first building in Melbourne to exceed the 300 metre mark. Designed also by architect Spender Katsalides, its palette responds to the blue, white and gold finishes of the adjacent Eureka Tower, and forms a pairing on the Melbourne South Bank skyline. With multiple earlier plans for the site, one such design included a 388 metre variant over 108 floors. And whilst this plan was later scrapped, due to safety concerns that included its overall height impacting on aviation paths overhead, the 108 floors lives on in the current naming. Australia 108 is home to more than 1,000 apartments, including a penthouse over the full floor plate of its 100th floor, which at the time was sold for a national record price. 
Today, Australia 108 is the tallest building in Melbourne, and also the tallest in Australia when measured to roof. Melbourne's had a rich history in building tall. And like in some other cities, it's reinvented its form over the decades in building taller and taller developments. Many prospective developments have also come and gone, with an equally rich history in the proposals for what could have been the tallest, but which were later unrealised. The city today is still very much active in the approval and construction of high-rise development. And it is a question of when, and not if, we will see the next Melbourne's tallest building.